G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, Happy New Year for all those uh, in other parts of the world. It's the 2nd of January here in Australia, but it's the 1st of January for other places. So I hope you had a great uh, New Year's and are having a great uh, New Year's Day as well. So New Year's Eve, I should say. That's usually the, the fun part of the night, although it can carry on if you're young and super <laughs> exuberant and all the rest of it. But let's get on to the crypto market. So... This was literally just 787 billion before, so 789 billion. So just in a matter of sort of, you know, maybe 20 minutes or an hour or so, uh, it's jumped up uh, 2 billion. So weekend and still pushing high. Uh, you know, no weekend retracement kind of looking likely at the moment, but it is still very early. So we can see that uh, Bitcoin dominance still hovering around that 70%. We haven't made it to the 75% that I thought we would see. Uh, and look, we, we may never make it to that. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But it is still possible. And look, if some of the things that we're hearing are true, that the institutional buyers that are coming in now, they're just the early ones, the real early ones. The real institutional FOMO from all the other institutions is still yet to come. And then the retail FOMO is yet to come. So I think this do dominance could quite possibly push up to 80, 85%. I'm not saying that it will. I just think it's possible. If things get really crazy, which, you know, they're probably going to get crazy anyway, but I mean just really crazy, initially everyone goes to Bitcoin. That's all people know. So this dominance could push up super high. But once they've spent more than a minute in the uh, space, they're going to start to look at other cryptocurrencies and they will just naturally buy, including the institutions. Now, they won't be able to go as willy-nilly as others, but, you know, uh, hedge funds and speculators and all the rest of it, and particularly retail FOMO, they will. And again, should PayPal add another cryptocurrency or something, like just watch for those to skyrocket. Currently, I think it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash that PayPal have. Uh, and they've all done reasonably pretty well. And again, it's still very early. They're only selling to uh, Americans and the Americans who want to buy cryptocurrencies at the moment. They haven't gone full retail FOMO yet. That is still yet to come. So watch out for prices. ETH gas prices, 39, not great, not awful. Look, it's been much worse. It was two, 300 gas prices uh, not that long ago. But, you know, it's been single digit gas prices as well. And that's really what we want to see. So the, the full rollout of ETH 2.0 sort of can't come quick enough. Um, all right, what about the big movers over 24 hours? So Bitcoin, look. On every one, the seven day, the 24 hour, the one hour, it just keeps moving up. There's no sort of retracement that seems near in sight. That's not to say we can't have one. I mean, this is, you know, somewhat leveling off, but it's been doing this before. It levels off and pushes higher. And we'll have a look at the chart very shortly. But 24 hours, what's really, you know, pumped hard? Poof, Dogecoin, the TikTokers. Good Lord, I wish I had got on that, but... Again, I wouldn't go chasing that. I'm, I'm not interested in that at all. Algorand, I'm uh, happy with how Algorand's doing. But look, in all fairness, this could be where things just start to get really crazy. Again, it's the start of the new year. Usually, this is the beginning of the real parabolic stuff based on previous history. Uh, and the altcoins will start to follow. Bitcoin will outrun most of them. Uh, but then they will, when it starts to level off and all the rest of it, then they just start to pump. And that's what's happening at the moment. Bitcoin's leveled off a little bit and look at all these coins just pumping. Now again, please be careful. This is not the best time to invest in cryptocurrencies, but it's not the worst time either. As long as you understand the cycles and that it could quite possibly dump 30, 40% uh, you know, by tomorrow, but if you're holding for the long term and you're in good projects and have done some research, chances are you're probably going to be fine. There's no guarantees in life. It's the same as stocks. You can invest in stocks and they go to zero. Tesla could go to zero. Something could happen. It's the probability game that we need to think of. Is that likely to happen? Probably not. Now, with some of the really good cryptocurrencies, it's the same. Probably that's not going to happen, but it's not guaranteed. I think, you know, the one real certainty is Bitcoin. I don't think Bitcoin can fail from here. Short of some, you know, new computer that knows how to break the code or something like that, I think Bitcoin is here to stay. 
Um, and again, none of this is financial advice, just my own personal opinion from someone who's been in the space for a, a little while. I think, uh, you know, we have to wait for Ethereum 2.0 to fully roll out to really know, but it's looking promising. I think Ethereum 2.0 is here to stay. I don't think it's going anywhere. I think Litecoin uh, is not going to go anywhere. You know, there's people who think a bit about Bitcoin, uh, Litecoin and probably more people who think very little of Litecoin and it's just a copy of Bitcoin and so on and so on. And look, that is partially true, but it's been declared, uh, you know, it's, it's been regulated and PayPal offer it. That has solidified its place. Litecoin's not going anywhere. It's basically Bitcoin, but you know, and this is how some people would say, I'm not saying it's this, although I do believe it partially, is it's faster and better in certain ways. It's not worth as much, there's a whole lot more coins, but it is basically Bitcoin, but faster. And again, it's a bit of a test net uh, for things that end up happening on the Bitcoin network anyway. So I'm a fan of Litecoin and I'm getting, getting a bit off tangent, but you know, there's coins out there that are gonna do really well uh, and that have a future. And the other ones, it's a bit of a guessing game at the moment. So again, we just gotta wait and see, but Synthetics Network, I keep wanting to buy some more and I'm hoping for a dip and it's just not happening. So I may just have to bite the bullet and buy some, I think. Uh, again, in the long run, I think $8 is going to be cheap. It's just, you know, if there's a hefty retracement sometime soon, I think $8 is a bit overpriced. So again, maybe I'll just forget about it. I've already got my bag of synthetics. Uh, I do want to buy more. I've got cash on the side, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But that's some pretty good double digit gains there. I mean, you know, again, this is nearly 10%. OKX is nearly 10%. Uh, you know, some great gains here. And again, Dogecoin, 40%. But what you need to understand about Dogecoin is it usually pumps and then dumps. Uh, so just be careful. I'm not saying it dumps and goes to zero, but it has uh, cycles like these where it pumps real high and then pulls right back. So if you're not already taking profit there, um, buyer be warned is what I would say. All right, so great gainers there. All right, what about uh, big losers? Has anyone really lost all right, there has been a couple, and we're going to talk about this. So Monero, Dash, Zcash. Uh, so, you know, there's some exchanges that are delisting uh, privacy coins at the moment. So that is why they're going down now. Empty set dollar has been, <laughs> it has not done well. I don't know much about empty set dollar, so I can't really offer uh, anything on why it's happening. All I know is it's really been getting hammered. It reminds me a bit of Filecoin, uh, just down, 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 and more down. Uh, Ren, bit of a pullback, but again, it pumped by 16%, so we can see that it pumped up, and now it seems to be flattening off, and flattening off, and hopefully this is a bit of a uh, an accumulation zone again before further ups. Uh, Zilliqa, but look, most of these losses aren't too bad. I mean, you know, these double-digit ones, they do hurt a bit. The single-digit ones, it's to be expected. Again, we spoke about this the other day, Polkadot went on such a run, I do see it continuing to pull back. You know, 60% in seven days, I would say you're going to probably lose close to a third of that. So let's say Polkadot's worth $8.73. I wouldn't be surprised if I saw it come back to around about sort of seven-ish dollars, uh, maybe even the $6 mark. Uh, so yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Now, I'm not saying... Th uh, 30% of the total price of these gains. So again, I wouldn't be surprised to see this in the $7 mark at all, and maybe even drop down into you know the high $6 range against the US dollar. No guarantees, but that's possible. But all the rest of these, they're fairly kind of stock stand considering how much they've pumped, like Uniswap, you know, pump 40%. So of course it's gonna have a pullback, but is it maybe reaching for further highs again? Cosmos, exactly the same, up 16%. So of course, you're always gonna have your corrections. Uh, Yearn Finance, much the same. Uh, Cardano, so again, these uh, you know retracements, pullbacks aren't too bad. And of course, Litecoin uh, is finally correcting after it had you know such a good run. Uh, and I haven't looked at the charts, but I wouldn't be surprised if Litecoin kind of pulled back more to around the $110, $105 range. Not saying that's going to happen. I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised if it happened. Uh, but that's not to say that I think that means it's all over for Litecoin. This is just a correction that happens to all of these coins. It even happens to Bitcoin. It just hasn't happened to Bitcoin for a while. All right, so since we've been talking 789, what's happened? Anything different? 
No, still about 789. All right, so what I want to do is go over and have a look at the charts. So let's have a look at Bitcoin. As we can see, it's just been on this run and it has not had a real big pullback since about here. Again, this was a 17% pullback, so you know we can round it up to sort of, well, I suppose you'd round it down to 15 more than you'd right, round it up to uh, 20%. But you know, if we're going by, you know, the tens rather than the fives, then you know, round it up to uh, 20% rather than 10%. So that's pretty close. So I am expecting something like this, if not heavier, to happen again. I just don't know when it's going to happen. I just there's so many stories about there about out there about all this bullish sentiment that you know we might get something like this or we might just sort of get something like this where it quickly peaked up for a little bit because i mean what kind of retracement was that let's have a look i don't think this is going to be anything too hectic there we go that was around about a 10 percent retracement sort of thereabouts probably a little bit less but again that's more just where it wicked it's the candle body was very tight so that's you know a little bit like a spinning top when you see candle bodies like that uh, a lot of the time it's a bit of indecision in the market and they're not sure where they're going to go as you can see here uh, and and here uh, and here again it's been coming down it's not sure what's going to do and then it fires back up uh, I can't read them I, I, again there might be some chart expert analyst out there that'll be able to tell you but generally what I see is when I see things like that is it's a bit of indecision uh, the market is unsure of which way they're going to go uh, and you know Sometimes they just go the opposite way. So been going down, indecision, sure, are we going to go down? No, we go up. Again, going down, a bit of indecision, are we going to go uh, down or up? We go up. And again, most things are going up in a uh, bull market anyway, because we can see here another spinning top again was coming down, indecision, and went back up. Obviously, in a bear market, it can do something different. All right. What I wanted to show here is so crypto derivatives gain steam in 2020, but 2021 may see true growth. And what do you know? 2021 is here. Again, congratulations and happy new year to everybody uh, who's just getting onto the first today. All right, so we go down here. 2020 was the most important year for the crypto derivatives market so far. Both Bitcoin and Ethereum derivatives steadily grew throughout the year with their futures and options products available uh, across exchanges such as the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, OKEX, uh, Deribit and Binance. On December 31st, so New Year's Eve, Bitcoin options open interest reached an all-time high of $6.8 billion which is three times over the last 100 days before that, signifying the speed at which the crypto derivatives market is growing amid this bull run. So again, you know, if this is playing out like it has before, we're very early. Uh, this is, again, still, you know, this will likely run for a majority of 2021, excuse me, if not maybe all of 2021 and into 2022. Excuse me. Now, I'm not saying this uh, bull market will run into 2022, but it's just possible. It's something we need to keep in the uh, in our minds. I think it's probably going to you know, follow suit as it has before uh, and run through to sort of December. But look, it could finish earlier. Again, the big boys are in and maybe they might try and start selling off before everyone else does and all the rest of it. Who knows what's going to happen? Or maybe they push it even further and higher uh, than what you know we're expecting hard to know uh, exactly what's going to go on but yeah interesting times and again the derivatives market uh, you know the you know the options for that and the put options and all the rest of it uh, they're, they're only growing more and more people are coming into this space uh, and you know again we'll have a look there's an article coming up the retail FOMO hasn't even started and the institutional FOMO hasn't even started. This really is early adopters. So if you're here already, you are an early adopter. Keep that in mind. All right, so we go over here. As I said, Dash, uh, their prices really are taking a bit of a fall uh, along with uh, Monaro and Zcash, but it's not all doom for them. So Dash announces new update. Social payment wallet enters testnet. Dash Core Group has announced the release of new updates for the Dash platform as well as the Dash Smartphone, uh, Dash Pay Smartphone Wallet app. So look, they're going to find ways to uh, stay relevant. And I know like Venezuela, Dash is big over there and other countries, I'm sure it's going to do the same. Uh, it's not dead yet. Uh, and it may be 
uh, a good buying opportunity. I'm not saying it is. Again, nothing is financial advice, but things that have had a good retracement on occasions at the very least are good times to buy. I'm not saying go out and buy Dash. Obviously, they're uh, being delisted for a reason and there could be things coming, but don't just automatically write these uh, projects off there. Uh, and if you're, you know, if you're an, someone who's looking for opportunities, this might be an opportunity. I'm not saying it is again, but just keep that in mind. So, you know, even though their uh, coin is down at the moment, they're being delisted, they're still out there actively working. They do have a community. Uh, it's, you know, it's probably not the end for Dash just yet, but we will have to wait and see. Because I know there's something uh, with Dash where not all their transactions are private. You have to tick something to make it private. Uh, I forget exactly how it works. But they're not all private transactions, uh, and so it's not a privacy coin all by itself. So, yeah, not the end for Dash just yet. Uh, and as we go over here, so Bittrex to delist privacy coins, Monero, Dash, and Zcash. So hence why uh, they were so heavily affected. And look, there's probably going to be others that will follow uh, suit. Other exchanges uh, could possibly do the same. And that, look, that could really hurt the price of those coins even further. So again... It could be a really good buying point, or it could be just the start of an even further bigger downtrend. Uh, you know, you have to do your own research uh, on those. Me personally, uh, I'm not invested any in, in any of them. It's not that I don't like them. Uh, it's just I had a gut feeling that regula regulation-wise, uh, it would be hard to regulate those because they're privacy coins and all the rest of it. Uh, likewise, I don't think Bit. Uh, coin is probably going to go into the privacy uh, space. I know they've talked about it, developers have, but I just don't think they'll do it because uh, governments will come after them. And even though people say Bitcoin, uh, you know, can't be, you know, shut off and all the rest of it, governments can crack down on those who are trying to use it and they'll go after the developers and all that themselves. That's my personal opinion. So I do think that uh, Bitcoin won't go down that route uh, uh, in the full privacy. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm sure they'll have some you know, parts and ways that will make uh, for private transactions, but not completely uh, you know, hidden transactions. I do think Bitcoin will stay away from that. All right, so fact-checking. What we got here is this was an interesting article. So uh, Brad Garlinghouse has claimed that many G20 governments uh, call XRP a currency. Turns out that's not actually true. So he's pitching a little bit of heat there. <laughs> I'm not, again, trying to throw shade on XRP. Uh, I, I sold a majority of my XRP. I still have some. I still hope XRP can come out of this on the right side. But this kind of stuff doesn't help because this is what they call pitching heat uh, <laughs> in the sales industry. Uh, basically, it's telling pork. He's telling lies. So not many uh, G20 call XRP a currency at all. Now, there are some bigger players that have sort of leaned towards that way, uh, but not most of them uh, claim that it is a currency. And it goes through here and it talks about Argentina and even Australia. It says that there's no clear link to XRP in this ruling where they said uh, Bitcoin could be used as a security and was recognised as a form of investment. Uh, no clarification on XRP in Australia. Uh, the exchanges in Australia are still listing XRP and still trading though, so you know that's possibly a good thing. But that's not to say that can't and won't change later, depending on happens what happens with the SEC. Uh, Brazil, much the same. And again, you know you can go over here and have a look uh, cryptonews.com uh, and read all these if you want to. But if we basically go down to the bottom to the results, two out of twenty sort of. <laughs> Although XRP opponents might want to quarrel with a few of these verdicts and a few of them don't seem decisive enough, and of course there may be rulings uh, the searchers uh, have failed to uncover. Regardless, some may claim that it's a bit of a semantic stretch to claim that many GT, uh, G20 nations think of XRP as a currency. However, how, however oh God, tongue-tied, other economic big hitters outside the G20 have clear stances on XRP. These include Switzerland, where authorities, including the Swiss Federal Tax Administration, have included XRP on lists of cryptocurrencies per uh, Library of Congress uh, compiled data. And in Asia, Singapore's International Commercial Court has ruled that cryptocurrency assets have intangible property status. 
Lexology also pointed out that crypto assets are legal under Singapore law and Ripple has publicly spoken out about both countries' recognition of the non-security status of its XRP token. So look, it's not all dead in the water for XRP uh, and the price has bounced. And again, I'm spewing, I literally sold at the bottom uh, and it's you know gone up a few percent, but it's starting to pull back again. So I may still get another opportunity to buy into Ripple Cheaper, uh, which I, I am holding cash on the side for, but I'm not going to be rushing into anything. And if I have to buy XRP at a little bit more, once I know where the clarity and all the rest of it is, then uh, so be it. But I just, I couldn't stay in it while it was dropping so low although again hindsight maybe i could have we'll have to wait and see all right now the famous quote uh, bitcoin is rat poison squared so that was warren buffett's famous claim so noxious poison bitcoin's market cap surpasses warren buffett's berkshire hathaway valuation i wonder how he feels about that now now I never want to throw shade on anyone. I don't believe in that. And I'm definitely not throwing shade on uh, Warren Buffett right now. I think he's a very smart man. He's one of the greatest investors uh, that, you know, has possibly ever been uh, and maybe for a very long time. But this is my personal thoughts, thoughts on it. Have a look at these two guys. They're old. The older you get, the less open you are to new things a lot of the time not all the time uh, it's a bit of a generalization but generally as you get older you just get a bit set in your ways and you're not all that open to change and you don't uh like sort of new stuff you just want things to stay the same because you know <laughs> and old people are probably going to get right up me for this if i have any older watches but uh, please forgive me i don't think, mean this in a condescending way and i'm 40 plus years old myself so i'm heading towards there you, you know you just you get a little bit sort of you know, it's harder to remember things and all the rest of it so you know you really like to operate off autopilot and trying to learn new things uh, can be quite difficult so my belief is that they just they were unable to get past their old age <laughs> oh, i feel so bad saying this already but i feel that's what it is they were just too old and too unwilling to understand and they've missed out on one of the greatest investing opportunities you know the world's ever seen to this point it's not to say there couldn't be better opportunities in the future but at this point nothing has performed as well as bitcoin uh, at least that i'm aware of it's outperformed everything by an absolute country mile since its inception I'm not saying in the last week or two or even the last year and it's performed pretty well in the last year but there's stocks that have uh, gone up uh, you know a couple of thousand percent and i spoke about that in a few earlier videos just this year but do those stocks have the ability to keep doing that for the next decade? That's what Bitcoin keeps doing. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, whether that can continue or not, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But very interesting that that's what he called Bitcoin, uh, rat poison squared. And it's now, you know, it's worth more than his entire, uh, you know, Berkshire Hathaway. So, you know, it'd be interesting if a story come out that he actually was invested in Bitcoin or did get in not long after saying that because we just don't know at the moment. Uh, again, maybe not directly under Berth, Berkshire Hathaway and all the rest of it. He probably hasn't considering the, the way he uh, voiced his opinions about it, but maybe it's similar to Jamie Dimon where we found out that he was bagging it and secretly buying it all at the same time. So yeah, that's probably come back to bite him and that will probably be his greatest missed opportunity like he spoke about some other ones he had the opportunity to buy into things and missed it i think amazon was one of them uh possibly facebook as well don't quote me on facebook but i know amazon he missed that i think bitcoin's going to be the one that uh is going to be the real kicker that he will uh he'll be known as the greatest investor ever who didn't invest in bitcoin <laughs> uh interesting sort of tag right last but not least now bitcoin is smashing records there's no hint of retail FOMO. Retail FOMO is massive. That is really what is, you know, going to carry it to the outer stratosphere. Like the institutions, don't get me wrong, they're going to put in huge amounts of money, but they aren't going to put in the same kind of money that our retail is. Retail is going to, 
just push it so unbelievably high because they're going to be buying from the institutions and things like that. They're going to be buying from PayPal. They're going to be buying from Squash, uh, Square Cash App. They're going to be buying from, you know, everyone else, uh, buying from banks and all, all those and investing in those companies. Uh, they really are going to go crazy for this stuff. And the difference between now and the 2017 run is now there's so many on-ramps. You can buy Bitcoin from anywhere. There's ATMs uh, at shopping centers you can go and buy them for uh, in Australia and other parts around the world. There's a number of exchanges out there. It's finally regulated. Banks are getting involved. Hedge funds are getting involved. Insurance companies are getting involved. You name it, they're all getting on board. Well, not they're all, but eventually i think basically everyone will be on board with bitcoin and cryptocurrencies i don't think there'll be any real investor who doesn't have some kind of investment in bitcoin within the next 10 to 20 years and that's what makes me think there's so much more upside for bitcoin i think the true parabolic stuff uh, is going to slowly but surely come to an end but i don't think the returns won't still be big you just won't be able to you know 15 20 x your return in a year those kind of returns i think will diminish after this bull run i think this rule this will be the one this is where again the institutions are now starting to get in they're going to push in very very fast uh, and then when retail pushes in you know depending on who you listen to again you know plan b stock to model flow says two hundred eighty-eight thousand. uh you know other people are saying half a million to a million dollars per bitcoin unbelievable to think that those prices could happen in the next few years after that i think the returns will be much smaller but i think bitcoin will always continue to be worth more because of that limited supply there is no other asset like it that we have on earth where it is just completely and utterly fixed you cannot have more than 21 million bitcoin it's cap that's it it's done and that's the way it is with a lot of the uh, cryptocurrencies that we currently have they are capped you know whether it's a hundred billion or you know 40 million or 60 million or whatever it may be they're capped that's why they are valuable because they have a an uh, a fixed supply there is not going to be any more can they be divided down and sold off yep absolutely but you can't make more of them you still only have that many um, very interesting times for the market again i just want to wish everyone a very happy new year if it's uh the new year for you it's the second of january for us here in australia hit that like button down below hit that subscribe button i generally put out daily content other than on the odd occasions where i might have family or work that get in the way hopefully someday i can make this my full-time gig uh that is my ideal dream i'd love to i'd love to do that uh put a comment down below whether you think you know retail fomo is here yet there is some because it's they say no hint that's not true i'm technically retail fomo and most of the people here listening are retail fomo but when do you think they're going to come if they haven't already come do you think this cycle is going to follow much like the suit uh, of 2017 do you think it's going to be more like the 2013 one which really just went crazy i know i've seen some charts out there that show how it's tracking and it's sort of halfway between 2017 uh, and 2017 so it could be something even more crazy than 2017 but not quite as crazy as the 2013 sort of charts so let's go back and quickly have a look at that before we get out of there so if we go back hopefully this is going to uh, load and won't sort of take too long knowing my luck it's going to take forever <laughs> all right come on here we go so this is what i'm talking about this was the 2013 uh right here so it started here it had this big blow off top it had like two peaks then it pulled back really hard and then it just went again so i mean the gains from here were absolutely crazy so so there we go that's fifty seven thousand yeah 57,000 percent that went up if you had a well i've gone a little bit over there but basically something ridiculous uh that's never been seen now we can go and do the same we go from the cycle low here to the cycle high there 
and thereabouts. So that's a 12,000% gain from the bottom of the bear market through to the uh, 2017. So we went from 57,000% to 12,000%, uh, and it's tracking somewhere between there. So, God, what's between 57,000 uh, and 12,000? Oh, let's round it off and say it's going to be somewhere around sort of 30,000. So imagine Bitcoin going up 30,000% from this cycle low here. I don't know what 30,000% of 3,000 is, but I'm saying it's going to be a whole lot. Uh, interesting times ahead. So yeah, I'd love to know your thoughts, uh, not only on the retail FOMO, when do you think they're going to get here? Do you think this current cycle is going to be somewhere between this crazy one of 57,000% from uh, cycle, cycle low to cycle high and this one from cycle low to cycle high, which was 12,000%. And again, roughly that puts us around about 30,000% from the cycle low of $3,000, if that plays out. All right, stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train. And I'll see you next time.